Hi guys, my name is Ben Guilford. I'm the owner of The Fire Brick Company and I am really excited to be introducing our series on how to build our pre-cast oven kit. Uh, this has been something that we've been working on for a very long time uh, and so it brings me a lot of joy to be able to bring it to you. Uh, we really hope you get a lot out of it. Uh, now this particular video is actually going to work really well for people who just want to get a bit of an overview. What is this oven all about and how does it go together? In this video we're actually going to unbox our precast oven kit and then take you through all the components and show you how it all goes together in a relatively short space of time. Uh, when we were planning these videos, uh, we talked about well, do we dumb them down and, um, and sort of skip some things, make the videos fairly brief, or do we include as much detail as possible, which was going to have the effect of making the videos fairly long. In the end, we decided Let's make them long. Let's give them as much detail as possible uh, because we really want our customers to be able to see these videos and watch them before they buy the oven. We want you to be able to see exactly what you're getting. Uh, and so we've actually gone into a lot of detail in these videos, which as a consequence makes them quite long. We've broken them up into sections uh, to, to make them more manageable and you'll find in the uh, YouTube uh, description there are chapters within the section so you can skip through them and get to the bit that you really want to see. Uh, but guys we really hope that you enjoy this series, uh, that you get a lot out of it and as always if you have any questions uh, as you're watching them please don't hesitate to reach out to us and ask away. Uh, now, if you are one of our lovely Australian customers, you will be receiving a kit that looks something suspiciously like this. Uh, it will be strapped on a heavy duty timber pallet, uh, which is then heavily wrapped uh, and, and labeled so that it gets to you in one piece. And we ship them all over Australia that way without a problem. If you're overseas, so if you're in New Zealand, Canada, America, Europe, wherever you are, if you've ordered one of our wood-fired ovens and it's being shipped overseas, then you're going to be getting something like this in a heavy-duty timber crate. Uh, now, guys, if you are getting one of the export kits, uh, be ready to get your hammer and crowbar out to open that crate up because we put an awful lot of nails into it to make sure that it gets to you safely and securely wherever you are in the world. Uh, so we're now going to do a bit of an unboxing, so we're actually going to unpack one of the kits and show you all of the individual components that go into it, uh, so that before we start the actual building process, you can see everything that's included in the kit uh, and get an idea of where everything goes and maybe how to, I don't know, unpack the kit and store things so that they're going to be ready when it comes time to use them. Okay guys, so if you're in Australia and you bought one of our precast oven kits, when you get it home, uh, it's going to look something like this and it will be sitting in your trailer most likely. Uh, and so the process is just to open up the pallet and then hand unpack each item. I uh, really recommend that you have some help for this because particularly the castings are quite heavy. Uh, some of the castings can weigh over 60 kilos, so they're definitely a two-man lift. Uh, and when you're opening up the pallet, you're obviously going to need a blade, a Stanley knife of some kind. Um, just be careful that you don't cut all the way through and cut into any of the bags that are underneath because they're hiding just behind the surface. Alright, so this is the kit. This is our precast oven kit uh, and you can see there's quite a lot to it. So what we have here today is the P85 precast wood fired oven kit. Uh, the reason for that is this is one of our most popular uh, designs at the moment. And uh, I'm going to take you through all the components uh, from the ground up, is, which sort of makes sense for me. It's the easiest way to go through everything. So the very first thing you'll be doing, uh, if you've already built your stand, is you'll be putting down a layer of calcium silicate board. And this material here is a high temperature insulation board with a very high compressive strength. And so this is what we're going to be sitting the entire oven on top of to prevent the heat in the oven from being drawn through the floor and into your stand. Uh, now you'll be using paper templates to cut out this board. Uh, you'll be pinning the paper templates onto the board with the thumbtacks that are provided. Once you've got your calcium silicate board all cut out and set out on your stand, the next thing you'll be doing is laying your floor tiles. Now in order to put your floor tiles 
lockdown, you're gonna be using the hybrid mortar mixture that is provided with the kit. Uh, and you'll see that over here. Now, please be aware that you will need to mix that hybrid mortar with general purpose cement, Portland cement, lime and fine washed sand. Uh, the ratio is on the bag and we just like to reinforce the fact that those components aren't in that bag at the moment. You will need to add those. Okay, uh, so that's the mixture that you're going to use to bed the floor tiles down. Uh, so the floor tiles are all carefully cut to size for you uh, and you'll find in the written instructions, uh, you'll find the layout to follow to get them all set out uh, correctly on your calcium silicate board. Uh, now, on that note, uh, please make sure you refer to the written instructions when you're building your oven. Please don't rely solely on these videos. These videos are here to help uh, and, and they're really here to act as a, a supplement to the written instructions because there's information that's contained in the written instructions that's just not contained in these videos and vice versa. So you need to use both of those mediums to get the full picture of how to build your oven. The next thing you're gonna be doing installing the precast components that make up the dome of the oven, uh, as you can see here behind me. So these are made with a high grade refractory castable that's then reinforced with stainless steel fibers throughout the, the casting. Uh, and so these components are here, they're all numbered, um, they're again uh, identified in the further videos and in the written instructions to help you place them. Uh, and this is what's gonna form the dome of the oven. Once you've got the castings in position, you will need to put a bandage of refractory mortar over the seams of the castings on the outside, and you'll need to fill the keystone at the top of the, the dome with the refractory castable that's provided. Uh, now, in order to pour the keystone, you'll be using a fiberglass form and you'll be propping that up on the inside of the oven, forcing it up with a car jack in underneath the keystone so that you can pour your refractory mortar into that void to create that keystone. Now, once the dome is, is built, then it's time to lay the brickwork that forms the vent area at the front of the oven. All of these bricks are cut to size for you and you'll notice there's formwork to build them around. Uh, and we're trying to make the process as easy as we can for you. So we've even put lines on the formwork indicating where to put your mortar joints and so on. Uh, so once you've got your vent arch laid, and for that you're gonna be using more of that refractory mortar mixture, then you're gonna install the precast flue gallery, uh, which you'll see over here. Uh, now I'd like to point out something about the precast flue gallery. You'll notice it has a stainless steel flue sleeve already installed in the flue gallery itself. Uh, and there's a stainless steel ring that runs around that, which has a plastic film on it, which is a protective film just to keep it looking good. Please remove that film before you start using the oven. Okay, that's just there to keep it looking good uh, until it gets to you. Once it gets to you, you can peel that off. Hiding underneath this ring, you'll see an expansion joint. Now, this expansion joint is filled with a stainless steel fiber reinforced ceramic fiber rope. The idea there being, when we heat the oven, this sleeve is going to expand and contract as it heats and cools. Uh, and so this ceramic fiber rope has got a little bit of give in it, which allows the flue to expand and contract without putting any undue stress into the precast flue gallery. So once the precast flue gallery is installed, the next step is going to be to insulate the dome of the oven. Uh, and for that, we provide you with ceramic fiber blanket. Um, so you'll get more than enough to give you two layers over the entire dome of the oven. All right, uh, that's 50 millimeters coverage, uh, which is more than enough to keep all the heat inside the dome of the oven where we want it to be. We really want as little heat as possible to escape through the walls of the oven. We want it to be soaked up in the precast dome and then kept in there so that it can radiate back down and cook your food. Uh, so we'll be applying that. Uh, so now if you're wondering what these green things are, uh, these are actually a special extra that we put in to make the process of installing the ceramic fiber blanket just a little bit nicer. It's quite a scratchy material. Uh, if you've ever dealt with any kind of insulation, you know that it's very itchy. Uh, and so we've actually given you a pair of VET exam gloves. Uh, now the idea behind the VET exam gloves is that they don't just cover your hands, but they actually go all the way up 
to your shoulder. Uh, so that way when you're dealing with the blanket and maybe it's rubbing against your forearms, it's just rubbing against these gloves and not against your skin giving you uh, a lot of itching. So those are going to be really useful to you. Over the top of that, uh, around the perimeter of the oven, we're providing you with this uh, weather sealing kit. So we have a roll of aluminium strip and a tube of a high temperature silicon, which is actually custom made for sealing around wood-fired pizza ovens. Uh, and the idea of these components is to create effectively a, a watertight barrier around the perimeter of the oven, which is gonna hide underneath the render layer. Uh, the concept there is we want to prevent any water that somehow makes its way underneath the edges of the render. We want to prevent that water from getting into the floor of the oven and getting wicked up into the oven and soaking it over time. Uh, not that that would be a huge issue. Uh, to be honest, getting some water in your oven is just par for the course. It's the nature of the beast. You will find uh, that you will get some water getting into your oven, but the drier you can keep your oven, the better. Because then when you go to fire it up next time, rather than driving out moisture, which absorbs some of the energy from the fire, you're just heating up your, your oven instead, which is really what you want to be doing. Okay, so that's the weather sealing kit. Uh, now, once you've got that around there, you're going to be holding that in place with uh, long screws, which are provided in your kit. Uh, and then you'll be installing uh, some large nails. Now, these nails are there to provide hitching points for lashing down the ceramic fiber blanket. To lash the blanket down, we give you a roll of tie wire. So you're gonna use this around the, the end of the large nails, uh, which are hitching points. You're gonna go backwards and forwards over the ceramic fiber blanket to tie it down using that wire. You're then also gonna install the chicken wire. Now the chicken wire is there to keep the blanket down against uh, the dome of the oven, but it also acts as reinforcing for the render layer, which is the next step in the build. With the ceramic fiber blanket on, you've got your chicken wire over the, over the blanket uh, to, to give you reinforcing in your render. It's time to put the render on, and that's what these bags are for. This is called light-filled perlite. Uh, this is a special grade of perlite which is actually treated. So, Think of it as uh, stone, but super lightweight. Uh, so the idea of it is it's used in lightweight concrete, uh, and that's what we're effectively gonna be making. So you're gonna be adding general purpose cement, or Portland cement, lime and wash sand to this perlite material to create a render. Uh, and then you're gonna be doing a two inch thick render shell over the whole dome of the oven. That does a couple of things. Uh, firstly, it gives you additional insulation over the ceramic fiber blanket. And secondly, it gives you a protective shell to protect the oven and the blanket from the world. Uh, so, I mean, one day some child might decide to climb on the dome of the oven. Uh, and guess what? It's more than strong enough to handle that. In fact, it can handle me standing on it. That's how strong that 50 mil of perlite render is going to be. On the insulation side of things, the perlite cement mix is um, quite a good insulator, but the ceramic fiber blanket is three times better. It is a phenomenal insulator. Now, in order to shape the render over the dome, you're probably thinking, wow, how, how does it get it so round, you know? And I'm no professional renderer, let me tell you. Uh, but in your kit, you'll be getting one of these. So this is not packaging material. Please don't accidentally throw it out. Uh, it is made of polystyrene, uh, but it is something that we want you to keep. Uh, because it has a special curve cut into this face. The idea there being that that helps you get the curve of the dome. If we were rendering a flat surface, you throw some render on and then you get a flat polystyrene float and you do little swirling motions and that flattens out that whole surface really well. Um, but if we tried to do that on a curved surface, well, we'd end up with lots of flat spots. So that's why we give you this curved float. Uh, and uh, these have been super popular uh, and really something that you're going to enjoy using. So the standard P85 kit also comes with a flue and a cowling to suit the flue. So this flue is 900 mil or three foot 
Hi, uh, and just be aware if you're in Australia and you need some extra flu components, maybe you need some 45 degree bands, or maybe you need a flu system that's designed to punch through a color bond roof, let us know, that is the kind of thing that we can help you with. Uh, if you're overseas, then don't worry, these are standard size flus, so you'll be able to locate a local supplier to help you out with the parts that you need for your particular uh, roof system that maybe you need to go through. On that note, please check out the flu video as part of this series, uh, and we take you through the process of what to do if you do find yourself having to run a flu up through a seal. Now, if you're in Australia, your kit will include a five litre tub of acrylic base coat roll-on render in white. And you have the option to purchase a spray can of high temperature paint for the flu gallery at the time of ordering. Please note we can't ship out the high temp paint on its own as it's classed as a combustible material and the couriers just won't ship it. If you're outside Australia, you'll be getting one of our export kits, which includes a five litre tub of acrylic base coat roll-on render in white and a spray can of high temp paint for the precast flue gallery in satin black. So the finishing touch, of course, is the door of the oven. So this is made entirely of stainless steel. Uh, we then get it blasted and powder coated in a lovely satin black finish. And we install these beautiful hardwood timber handles, and stainless steel ringlets just to make it look really good. And these handles are also uh, good for holding onto if they're hot, they don't burn you straight away as steel handles might. Uh, you also have a temperature gauge fitted to the door. Uh, so that's gonna give you a really accurate temperature reading all the way up above 500 degrees once you put the door into the oven. So there you have it guys. Uh, that is the introduction to our series on building the precast oven kit. Uh, we really hope you enjoy the series. Uh, so check out the next video, which is going to be us starting the process of building this oven. Uh, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to get in touch with us. Uh, and check out the rest of our website as well. You'll find if you jump on our frequently asked questions page, we put up lots of extra tips and tricks uh, for building your oven. So make sure you check out that portion of the website. If you're interested in the P85 precast oven kit, don't forget to really spend some time on the P85 page because there's a huge amount of information on there. Everything from building the stand to put the oven on all the way through to dressing it up, curing it uh, and, and things like that. So, Check that out, uh, but we really hope that you enjoy this series.